official good evening welcome to you around the whole wide world this is the moment we've been waiting for two hours of power from different continents into your home and we are believing for the church of jesus christ to be open jen it's great to be here with everyone in south africa today it's very exciting for us and what a privilege it is to be in your homes again we just want to thank you so much for the way that you have rallied around this purpose and this mission and this mandate to see the churches in South Africa opened to be able to praise God with all of our hearts and all of our minds and just corporately enjoy His presence together. Remember what the Word of God says, wherever we lift the name of Jesus, He draws all men to Him. So in these two hours, in fact, in the rest of this week, what we want to do is stir up such a hunger on the inside of you as people and children of God to run at the opportunity of being able to worship together as we, God intended us to do. That's what this is all about. So welcome. Thank you for being a part of this. And we know your hunger to be together, to meet together and worship God is going to be stirred up like nothing you've ever experienced before. That's right. We want to welcome each and every one of you watching on Facebook, watching on television, watching around the world on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, every different feed. We have for the first time, Jen, we have hundreds and hundreds of churches that have shared the feed. There is a movement that has started. Pastor At Bosov and the CRC Church has, has started a movement which has grabbed a hold by every single one of the Pentecostal churches, the charismatic churches, every single one of the traditional churches, all of the different denominations. For the first time, I can truly say, in my lifetime, we are seeing a unity in the church in South Africa like never before. So welcome to you. Welcome to you wherever you are. Welcome to each and every single one of you across the nations of the world and in particular to those of you in South Africa. This is a mandate two hours and we need you to share the feed right now. We need you to do everything in your power to text people, to share with them, to say get ready because in a matter of moments, we are going to be crossing to the CRC studio where Pastor At Bosov, Pastor Nikki van der Vester Hazen and others are going to be there. It's going to be a powerful <laughs> two hours. The CRC band is rocked up and ready to go. We're going to be Yay. praising the Lord. Jen, it's going to be a marvelous time tonight. That's all I can say. I am so excited. You know, just this weekend, in fact, since last week, Wednesday, um, my daughter and I had the privilege of uh, being in the Women's Conference in Tampa, Florida, uh, hosted by Adonica Howard Brown. And what an amazing event that was. But why I'm speaking to you about this is because in that auditorium, it was jam-packed, filled with women who were so hungry for the manifest presence of God. And when we began to worship, I have to tell you this because I don't even know how else or how to really put it in words. But as we began to worship together, the sound that was released from our corporate worship, it was so moving. It was so overwhelming. And I can promise you this, when we closed our eyes, it felt as though we were in heaven itself. And you know how it is so often when you get into a time of worship, and you just close your eyes and you're transported into the presence of God. You're sitting, it's as though you were right there in the throne room. And as you look, you gaze upon the throne, you see Jesus, you see your Savior. You get caught up in His beauty and how wonderful He is. But I have to tell you, when we were worshiping, everybody together with one heart, with one voice, that presence of God was so overwhelming that it felt that there was no distance in between. Right. That we weren't just in the throne room gazing upon the throne. We were there so close, face to face. There was nothing in between, no distance in between us and Jesus himself. I, 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 there's no way to explain it except that, that it was like that. And when I opened my eyes and I looked at the faces around me, I know there wasn't one person in that auditorium that wasn't experiencing the very same thing. The intimacy, the wonder, the glorious 
expression of what it is to be in the very manifest presence of Jesus. There is nothing to compare with it. And when we can come together in corporate worship, just focus about one thing, right. just, just having one thing in mind, one thing in heart, one thing that we're unified in, and that is to worship Jesus with all of our heart, with all of our might, with all of our strength, lifting our praises to Him. Let me tell you, the Word is true. When it says that He inhabits the praises of His people, He does just that. His presence so inhabited us as we lifted our voices together to worship Him. So that is a hunger that we have for every single church in South Africa, that we can get to the place where once again, the people, you and I, our hunger is driving us more than anything else. Our hunger to be able to worship Him corporately together like that. That has to be such a driving force on the inside of us that nothing stops us from running into His presence and praising Him together right. as a body as we were meant to do. That's right, Jen. And that's what we are believing for. That's what these three days have been dedicated to. That's why the team are standing by at CRC Church. We're about to cross there in just a few moments. It's going to be a powerful time. It's going to be a powerful word. We're going to be praying. We're going to be worshiping. We're going to be spending time in the presence of the Lord together. And uh, we're going to be crossing there in just a few moments. But let me just give you an update where we are right now. All right, and while I do that, I want you to do something for me. I want you to get onto the Facebook feed right now. If you're watching, wherever you're watching from on this Facebook feed, I want you to hashtag open the church. Hashtag open the church. And then I want you to put your city. I want you to put where you're watching from. I want you to put the church you represent as well. If you're part of the CRC church, if you're part of NBCFC, I want you to put it down. If you're part of any one of the churches in Pretoria, Joburg, all over, there's, there's hundreds of churches that are joining with us tonight. And I want you to be representation of your church. All right, so it's going to be all on the Facebook feed. We're running Facebook. We're running YouTube. We're running Twitter, Instagram, wherever you're watching this from. I want you just to say, I'm there. I want there to be representation from every church. Never before have we seen a movement like this in these three nights, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are going to be powerhouse nights not only from here, but from the network all across the world and from the CRC Church in Pretoria, uh, South Africa, from the studios over there. And we're about to cross. They're giving me the cue. In a few moments, we're going to cross. But let me tell you where we are right now technically and where we are with our update. A letter was sent to the President of South Africa, and the letter was an open letter. It's available for you to read. It's available on the site. We'll post it. We'll share it. It's open and it's available for you to read it and to stand with us in unity for that. But the, the, the president of South Africa released a letter early this morning in response to that letter already. And uh, he has said that he will be addressing the nation of South Africa within this week. And so we're anticipating Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We don't know when that's going to be just yet. We haven't got the go-ahead, and we can't tell you exactly when it is, but all the news media will carry that. And we have said to the president, as a combination of churches representing millions and millions of believers in South Africa, Mr. President, Easter Friday, we are going to church. We want to go to church Easter weekend. We want to go to church Easter Sunday. And that's what you're saying. That's what you're believing with us. That's what you're connecting with us. So for the first time ever, I want to ask that you don't even for one moment only think about your church, that you think about the body of Christ. This is not about a movement of any one church. This is about a movement of all the churches of Jesus Christ coming together in South Africa. If you're watching this from outside of South Africa, I want to say we've dedicated these three days to the nation of South Africa, and I want you to pray with us. I want you to believe with us. We need you as a believer from anywhere in the world, wherever you're watching, to say we're standing with the church of Jesus Christ in South Africa for an open church. Because, Jen, the, 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 the men and women of God have said they are going to church on Easter Sunday. 
and that's and they're going to church Easter Friday, and that's what we want the, the president to know. We want the, the ministers of the nation to know. This is happening, sir, with or without your permission. The church of Jesus Christ is going to church on Easter weekend, and we want you to be bold. We want you to be ready. We want you to get dressed. It's going to be absolutely powerful. Hashtag open the church. We are going red. We are fighting the fight of faith all the way to the end, Jen. Because why? Because what you experienced this last week was what it's all about. It's about corporate worship. It's about us standing next to each other. It's about us lifting our hands, worshiping Him. It's about coming together in one place in unity where the Bible says true worshipers will come and worship me in spirit and in truth. And that's what this is about. Easter represents one year of a lockdown and Easter says no more. We are going to church. And that, Jen, is what the exciting thing is all about. Easter is coming and the body of Christ are coming together. We're about to cross. One final word quickly and we're about to cross. Tell me, guys, when they're ready for us in Pretoria. So I think what is really on everybody's hearts is the fact of, is it safe? Is it safe for me to go to church and worship together? Yeah. You know, because everybody's pushing this thing about the pandemic and the new exposure to, the, to this new strand. Let me tell you something. When you are in the presence of God, when we are in corporate worship together, when the anointing of God, the manifest presence of God is in that atmosphere, right. there is no demon in hell that will stick around that place. There is no disease, no sickness, no bondage. Nothing can exist in that place where the power of God is manifest in our corporate worship. Is it safe? It's the safest place you could ever be in That's this right. universe. So what we're going to do right now is I want you to get ready for corporate worship now through the television airwaves and through your social media device and any which way. I want you, if you haven't shared the feed, share it now, please. I ask every one of you, click on the bottom of the link, share this feed. We want thousands with us. We want people connected all over. Tell people right now to tune to channel 341 because ladies and gentlemen, right now we are about to praise the Lord. The CRC band, they are leading us from the CRC studio in a powerful praise. Pastor Ut is going to be up in a moment. Apostle Nikki van der Vesta Hazen is going to be sharing in a moment. This is going to be a powerful two hours. So come on, let's cross. Stand wherever you are. Lift your hands right now. Praise the Lord with us and let's go now to CRC Studios, Pretoria, South Africa.
Right now, right there where you are, God is able to meet you at your point of need. Connect with us. We're going to pray with you as we're going to continue to worship in Jesus' name.
burial, the resurrection of Jesus. Come on, we are preparing for a resurrection weekend. Look your hands to him tonight, wherever you are, and say, I want to. Love to shine. resurrection come on faith tv all over africa all over europe all over america wherever you are jump out of your seat tonight and give this amazing risen lord jesus christ a praise offering a shout make your neighbor mad that's underneath you in that block of flats stop your feet if you are alive because jesus is alive tonight hallelujah amen and amen we are going to have a wonderful time a wonderful week on Faith TV. Thank you, Dr. Andre and Jenny Raybert for this amazing opportunity to come together. This is going to be, be a week of worship. And we are believing God that on Friday morning, we are opening our churches safely and responsibly 50% in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are, are waiting for our president. We know that he is about to announce this decision. But hey, this is our time. This is the most important time of the year for us as Christians. And we are not going to roll over. We are going to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the death and the burial. Come on. The Bible says if Jesus did not rise from the grave, our faith is in vain. But He is risen. Say tonight, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. If you believe it, give Him one more praise offering tonight. Welcome Facebook Live, Faith TV audience, YouTube Live. We are going to have a fantastic time. We have uh, uh, Pastor Chris Matebule. We love him. My brother from another mother, I love him, he's preaching tomorrow night. And also Prophet Leon Dupree and his beautiful wife, they're here tonight, so we welcome them. Amen. And uh, the many thousands of angels in this place tonight, that's all of you, okay, you are messengers, all of you. We call you angels tonight. God bless you, thank you for being here tonight. It's going to be a special night, take your seat in heavenly places. One of my dear friends, one of the great leaders God's raised up in South Africa and African nations in the world. Uh, as I think he spent a little bit too long in America, my personal opinion. <laughs> His two sons are here as well. You can always tell the measure of a man by um, his children. Amen. Yeah, that's just how it is. Because your kids don't follow what you say, they follow who you are. So, uh, for all of us that are raising children, and my children are raising children, I guess no opa. I have to be reminded of that every day of my life when I see my grandkids. Okay, because they're not catching on the BB thing, so they still learn. Um, but in any case, this is an amazing season for us as Christians. I spoke last night. If you didn't see the message, watch it. I believe that one of the greatest things that is happening in this lockdown is that Satan is trying to steal worship from God. Now, you may sit there tonight in front of your television set and say, well, God doesn't need our worship. It's not about need. It's about our need. We need to worship God. And the Bible says we were created by God and we were created for God and we were created to worship Him. And if you study the Bible, you will see from the Old Testament when God called His people out of Egypt, it was with one mandate. God said, go tell that Pharaoh to let my people go that they may worship me. It's time for the church to stand up and worship Jesus Christ, unapologetic, unashamed. Come on, say amen. Those who are here tonight in front of your television, you can jump up and shout amen in Jesus' name. There's nothing like worshiping God with other believers. And, 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 and I have my closet worship. You know, I said it to my staff last week. Uh, my wife and my children knew when I'm in my study, and now all, all my kids left my house, obviously. They all want to stay with me, but I'm not going to allow it because they, have to, they need their own homes and their own families. But they knew when I spent time alone with God, 
and they heard me praying tongues and when I was worshiping God, nobody was allowed to come close to my office. So you don't have to talk to me about my uh, private time with the Lord, I know that. And I've had very special encounters with God one-on-one. -on -one. I had God wake me up many times, two o'clock in the morning, speak to me. As a matter of fact, when God brought me from Lady Brain to Bloemfontein, God woke me up two o'clock in the morning. The other day I was reading everything God said to me and everything has come to pass. When I was pastoring a little church of 200 and I wrote down everything because a short pencil is better than a long memory. I wrote down what God said and I've seen God be faithful. But I want to tell you as a pastor, one of the things that sustained me during this lockdown is me coming to this platform every Sunday even with an empty building, because I have never seen this building empty. I see all of you in this place. I see this place filled to overflow. So when I sing with a beautiful camera people and this amazing band, and uh, you know, I, 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 I get refreshed, I get revived. For months and months and months, I preached, and it's the same people that stand behind the cameras every Sunday, and they were the audience, but that was fine because I was looking beyond them to each and every one of you. But I want to say to you what have sustained me is the fact that I can come, me as the pastor. And I don't think you're any different. I don't think you're different because I've also done the TV thing. I've always sat, also sat in front of the TV screen and tried to worship and try to lift my hands. And I'm telling you something, it ain't the same. It's never going to be the same. And it's never going to replace what God intended for His people. And that is for us to come together. Just as people in heaven stand before the throne of God, the Bible says out of every tongue, tribe, and nation, people are standing before the throne of God and they worship Him who sits upon the throne and they worship the Lamb that is slain from the foundations of the earth and they rest not day and night, but they cry, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The whole earth is filled with Your glory. So we are here, listen to make Jesus more famous. That's why we are alive. We are not in a, alive to survive. We are alive with a mandate to make Jesus more famous. And one of the ways we do that is through our worship. Maybe Wednesday if I preach, I'll, we'll still decide who, who's preaching on Wednesday night, but uh, thank God there was no lockdown after that woman at the well of Samaria had an encounter with Jesus. Women had five husbands, the one she was living with, with was not her husband, so the conversation Jesus had with her was never to expose her or to judge her. The conversation was merely to get her attention because although she was in sin, she was in religion. And he said, no, 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 no. This worship is not in a place. This worship is not in a mountain. This worship is in a person. And he said, well, I, I know the Messiah is coming. He says, I am He." And that's why I'm telling you, once you have found Jesus Christ, hallelujah, everything else changes. Once you fall in love with Jesus, the world cannot own you any longer. Once you fall in love with Jesus Christ, you love what Jesus loved. You become a lover of Jesus and you become a lover of the church. And I'm going to say it again. I, 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 I don't read uh, social media often, but uh, um, it's amazing how people don't want churches open. Why don't you go talk about taverns? And as a preacher, I'm not going to talk against taverns. I'll be going to the taverns because that's where Jesus were. So I'm for the tavern owners. You say preachers shouldn't say that. Well, I'm saying it. So there's something for you to criticize me about because Jesus was a friend of the sinners. I'll go there and I'll witness because sometimes I go to these places and it's like people just duck because they think I recognize them. Because, <laughs> you know, when you sit there and you see the preacher like that big on the screen, you recognize me and immediately your mind says, I recognize you. And I do. <laughs> so it's funny when I go to certain places how people are like, and there's no bush, Adam, to hide. And I say, what doest thou ya? <laughs> it's not reason to hide. It's, it's no reason. Come to Jesus. And that's what this week is about. We want our churches open so we can do what that woman at the well of Samaria did and say, come see a man who told me all things I ever did. Come see a man who loved me like I've never been loved. Come see a man who changed my life. That's why we want our churches open, so we can bring our world into the presence of Jesus Christ so that you can encounter Jesus for yourself. And the amazing thing about that testimony of that woman is that people came from the city after she ran to them 
Then they came to Jesus. And what did they say? They say, now we believe not because of your word, but we believe because we met him for ourselves. First-hand revelation. We met Jesus for ourselves. There's no human being that can live on a second-hand revelation. God has no grandchildren. You need your own encounter, your own revelation. And I don't know that you're going to find it by yourself under a tree, except if your name, name is Jonah and you are backslidden. But everybody else had an encounter, not always a Damascus encounter. Nicodemus was a seeker, a searcher. And then he met the truth as he was searching. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, he was pressing into the presence of God. Didn't have a Paul Damascus experience, but he was one of those at the foot of the cross when Jesus was crucified. I want to be at the foot of the cross this Friday morning. I know the cross is empty, but I want to come and celebrate my Christ. I want to celebrate what Jesus has done for me because my brother and my sister, I haven't forgotten that there was a time that I was blind. Now I see I was lost, now I'm found. That's not a religious statement. Listen, this man was bound by sin, but Jesus came and delivered me. And I want the whole world to experience the same Jesus, the same grace, the same love. That's why I want to get you into the presence of God so that I don't have to preach you a change into you so you can experience the very presence of Jesus himself. As you walk into this place, you will experience him in, in, in churches where the presence of God is. And, uh, you know, as I go to gym every day, I invite people, and there's a lot of people that now come to church that I met in gym. And why do I do that? Because I bring them where I met Jesus. I say, you need to come to church. You need to come to church. You need to come to church. You need to come. Jesus didn't just say go. He said come. Then he said go. So thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Go read your Bible, please. Stop being a stumbling block to what God is doing in this hour. And voice your religious opinion. The pattern is clear. The Old Testament, God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, the land of bondage, that they may worship Him. First thing God did was what? Establish His presence. And God spoke to Moses three times to build that tabernacle according to a certain pattern. Well, we can't mess with the pattern. The local church is God's pattern. The local church, the Bible says, is, is the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. Listen, that's what the Bible says. We are being built up, a dwelling place. That's why God, the master architect, birthed the church on the day of Pentecost, a specific way. 500 people saw Jesus ascend into the heaven. 120 people were gathered and 120 people were baptized in the Holy Ghost. The other 380 people received nothing. Those who stayed in isolation. Well, I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, I love you enough to tell you, the day the doors of the church are open, you better get your blessed assurance back in the house of God and get yourself back in a place of sacrifice and get yourself back in a place of hunger, hunger like Joshua said. After they possessed the land, they said, you decide, are you going to serve the God of the Amorites or are you going to serve the, God, the, the, the gods of the Canaanites? Or he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You make up your mind. Are you going to serve the God of apathy, the God of lukewarmness, the God of mediocrity, the God of fear? Or are, are you going to believe that God is able to sustain you and you will go to a church that is safe and responsible and you will get yourself back in the house of God and you will worship God unashamedly and you will be like a Joshua that says, as for me and my house, we will worship the Lord our God. Come on, this is not something that should be a debate. I'm taking a bit of time. You know, I got saved um, and I, I was doing an officer's course um, and nobody told me I just got saved as I went into the army uh, national service. And one thing I knew is I knew I had to be in church. So every Sunday I a walled. That means absence without leave. Leave. Because in those years, charismatic Pentecostal churches were deemed like whatever. Remember back in those days, if you clapped your hands, you were sick. Now, every church is clapping their hands. If you had a guitar, it was the devil. Now, every church has a guitar. Those years, you could only worship God with an organ. Give me some organ. <laughs> I can worship God also like an organ. The only thing is I'm going to become a bishop. I'm going to, the bishop anointing is going to hit me. Okay. 
So I can do the, I can do the organ thing. <laughs> hey, I'm not preaching, so don't take me anywhere. Don't be naughty. Amen. But what is better than the presence of God? People that make comments sometimes don't think what they say. How will we ever break racial barriers? If I was in the, sitting in my home with my white little family, how would I ever get to know a Pastor Chris Matabula? How would I ever get to know people from other cultures? How would I ever meet you? I mean, you know, we need to get along down on planet Earth, and the church is the middle ground. That's why Satan is targeting the church of our Jesus Christ, okay? I understand the pandemic is real, but our God is more real. And we are not putting anybody at risk when we bring people to our churches. We are more responsible than any other sector. I say it factually. Stop saying we're in it for the money. Please, we haven't received offerings for a year. Looks like you've got a problem with money. Because as soon as you hear the church has to be open, I'm sure they're looking for money. Excuse me. Just disappear. Let me be nice because I have to invite the speaker who's, who's nice. Amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight as we welcome Apostle Nikki from the best days of New Beginnings Christian Family Church, one of the great, great pastors. Walks and moves in the power of God. Yes, God is still a miracle worker on television, writes books. We are blessed to have him with us tonight. Come on, a big. I can't hug you. Bluetooth high five. God bless you. Love you. I'll hug you later. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give Jesus Christ a good shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. I want to thank Pastor Art, Pastor Noretta, Med Chanel and Angelique tonight. What a great family. I honor you as a general in this nation, around the world, for such a time as this. Come on, give it up for your man of God. Those of you watching around the world, why don't you just hashtag Art Bosov? <laughs> And uh, we love you. The whole of the nation loves you. You may take your seats. Thank you so much. Well, those of you watching on television, tonight's going to be a great night for you. And those of you who are in this building, I truly believe the presence of God is going to come and touch you. My life has been changed dramatically by an encounter I had with God. My desire is that you will have a supernatural encounter with God. And tonight I want to lead you into that place where you can have an encounter right there in your home. You know, in, in 2011, I was sitting in my room with my wife, sitting on the bed. We were watching Days of Glory. And uh, Apostle Maldonado was there, was back then preaching. And on a Wednesday night, just like this, I was watching television. And I was sitting in, a, in my bedroom with my wife and the next moment he turned towards the camera and he says there is a man of God watching me right now you grew up in the supernatural you saw miracle signs wonders and you have drifted away from that you've become like a seeker sensitive man of God and God says uh, your name is Pastor Nikki when he said that I knew Pastor Art, that's me I fell out of bed I started crying and I'm telling you, my life was changed that night through television. Don't think sitting there, you know, you're going to have an encounter with God, just like I had, right there in your room, in your living room, in your bedroom. Because the glory of God is going to touch you tonight in a sovereign, majestic, powerful way. And I believe that, you know, that encounter, if I, if I reflect back, you become a carrier of the encounter. You become... The person that walks around with that, with that encounter. And you're going to become a carrier of the supernatural power of the living God. And I want you right now, wherever you are watching from, I want you to start expecting that in the next couple of minutes, every sickness in your body will leave you. Every bondage will disappear. Every witchcraft, everything that's holding you and your family back in the next couple of minutes, it's going to break over your life in the name of Jesus. So I want you to share the feed. I want you to tell your friends to watch. I want you to get involved because God, the God of the supernatural is coming to visit you right there in your home and in this building. And I want to speak to you about what I feel in my heart, Pastor Art, for us moving into this weekend where we're going to open our churches to 50% capacity 
And we're just going to press in. We're just going to make a stand. And the church is now leading. Amen. And now we are declaring, man, the church is open for believers, for sinners, for people to be healed, touched, and delivered by the power of God this weekend. You must understand, if we remove the cross, if we remove the supernatural, you know, they told me, Pastor, they said, you preach too much about the supernatural. And I'm thinking, if I have to remove the supernatural from Bible, then there is no creation. There is no people walking through the Red Sea, three million of them. There's no feeding of them for 40 years. If we have to remove the supernatural, Daniel would have died in that lion's den. Jesus would have never been born, never walked on water, never raised the dead, never opened the eyes of the blind, never healed the people. Listen, the cross, Christianity is a supernatural religion. If we remove supernatural, we are just a club. But the supernatural is coming back to Christianity. And on this Easter, we declare the cross is coming back. The burial is coming back. The resurrection. Come on, we can have life and the ascension in Jesus' name. Somebody give a God praise for the supernatural power of God. Now allow me to just give you an introduction tonight on the supernatural. Faith works by the law of expectation. There are three dimensions of the supernatural. The first dimension is faith. You cannot enter into the supernatural without faith. Your faith is the most important thing. Without faith, I cannot access the supernatural. Miracles cannot happen without faith. But faith is expectation. So when faith comes into my heart, I start expecting the things which I don't see, but I have the substance. I believe it's coming. Then the second realm of the supernatural is the anointing. In the anointing, that law works by the law of hunger. Oh, excuse me, by the law of demand and supply. This is where, where the church got stuck in the level of the anointing. This is where we want the man of God to lay his hands upon us. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we want to have that manly uh, encounter, the man encounter. That's the anointing. So we will go to conferences and sit there and wait for the man of God to pray for us. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. And that is the law of supply and demand. You come, you lift your hands, you, are, you want something, and the man of God lays his hands upon you. A supply goes, you place a demand, and the anointing flows. The woman with the issue of blood, she came, she pressed through, she touched the hem of his garment. There was a law of supply and demand in action. But then there's the third realm of the supernatural, which is the realm of the glory. In the realm of the glory, that's where man is not seen. That is where we are not involved. And this is the transition the church has made in the past 12 months. We have gone from the level of the anointing into the level of the glory. Now it's no longer a man, but it's God himself touching you right there in your home, touching you in church buildings, touching you wherever you go, on the streets, because now the glory of God is filling the whole earth. And that is what we pursue. That's what we contain. And the law of the glory of God works by hunger. You have to be hungry for God. The churches are open this coming weekend. And let me tell you, there's going to be the greatest glory of God revealed this Easter 2021. People are going to get saved. People are going to get healed. People are going to get delivered, not because of a man, but because of the sovereignty and the glory of the living God. And I want you to come on this Easter weekend. Come excited. Come expectant. Come with the hunger to meet your living God again in His sanctuary. Come on, this is the hour for the glory of God. For the glory of God to fall again. The glory of God to come again in our midst like never before. In Jesus' name. I want to take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Haggai quickly. Haggai chapter 2. And I want to show you what's happening right now across the world. Haggai chapter 2. In verse number 6 to verse number 9. It says here, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, once more, in a little while, I will shake heaven and earth. How many of you know the world has been shaken? The sea and the dry land, and I will shake 
all nations, cultures, traditions, everything. And they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with what? Glory. Says the Lord of hosts, host, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts, and the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. I want you to get ready because the latter glory is coming. The latter outpouring is coming. And this outpouring, this revival that we're about to see, is not going to be a revival that you can put a name to it. Like, that's a prosperity revival. That's a prophetic revival. That is a word of faith revival. This is going to be an all-inclusive revival. In one meeting, you will see prosperity, healing, deliverance, prophecy, outpourings, everything at once because of the glory of God filling the temple. Churches around Around the world, I'm telling you tonight, when you open your doors again, there will be a new glory upon your people, a new glory in your buildings. New people are coming, new faces, new things are coming to your buildings in Jesus' name. Now, there are three things that happen here after a shaking. After a shaking, three things happen. And Haggai says this. Three things happen after the shaking. The first thing that happened was this. He says, the whole nation shall be, be, be shaken. Everything shall be shaken. And then he says here, I will fill this temple with glory. First thing. The glory of God is coming. The presence of God is coming. We've always said this. The greatest revival is coming. But I'm telling you, it's here. In this atmosphere, in this building, in this church, you can feel right here at CRC, Pretoria, South Africa, you can feel the tangible presence of the Almighty God, of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It's available for you. It's tangible. But then he says here, the second thing is, I'm going to fill this place with silver and gold. He interrupts the glory and he says, now I'm going to bring the wealth transfer. I'm going to bring the finances. And I want to speak to everyone watching right now to tell you, get ready for the biggest, biggest contracts you've ever signed in your life, for the biggest promotions, for the biggest increase. Whatever churches have lost in 12 months or businesses have lost, God is about to restore. And it's going to be at this Easter, double fault, because you missed last Easter, this one, double for all your trouble in Jesus' name. And then thirdly, what I love about this is, he says that this glory of this temple shall be greater. It will be mega. It will be bigger than anything that we've ever seen before. And out of this, there will arise a people, he says here, a people which is called the remnant. I want you to hashtag that word, remnant. Hashtag that word, remnant. Say it, remnant. What is a remnant? The word remnant in the Hebrew means this. Sharaf, which means chosen. Many are called, few are a remnant. Few are chosen. Then, it's a survivor. So another definition of remnant. He's a survivor. I'm sure you've survived a lot of things in 2020. I've survived a lot of things. If you've survived COVID, you're a remnant. You survived the, the onslaught, the pandemic, you're a part of the remnant. Survivors. And then, yes, it also speaks about a residue. The word remnant means a residue, something that stays behind. You can buy a car, and if the previous owner, owner smoked, you can do whatever you want. You can't get that residue out of that thing because there's a residue. And then, fourthly, I love this one. The word remnant means this, a supernatural breed. I want to give you characteristics of this remnant tonight. Because I don't know about you, but I'm part of a supernatural breed. We just different. It's just a different breed of people. It's just they talk different. They look different. They build bigger buildings. They do bigger things. And I'll give you the characteristics right now. But God is about to raise a remnant 
in this hour that has survived people that walk around with the residue of the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon them. There is coming an outpouring of the supernatural power of God. A new breed, a supernatural breed is being raised tonight in this place and across the world in Jesus' name. Come on, hashtag that word. It's remnants. Now before I give you the characteristics, I, I, I said to the Lord, why has this war intensified so much? And I, I felt the Spirit of God said this. When you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness, the war will t- intensify. If you face a war now that you've never faced in your life, let me tell you, you are at the brink of the greatest miracle of your life. And the warfare that has intensified is because it is opposing everything that's coming. What is coming? The latter glory is coming. What is coming? Souls are going to get saved more than ever before. Those people that are unsaved, they're going to get saved. Your backslidden aunt, uncle, husband, wife, they're going to get saved. Your children are coming back. Drug addicts are going to be set free. People are going to be healed. This Easter, there is coming a great, great, great move of the Holy Ghost. The remnant is coming together for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The latter glory. And this fight is always about three things. Resources. Territory. And people. He always wants the resources. Wants the territory. And then he wants people. That's why he's trying to shut down the church. Because he knows if you can get that territory and you can get the resources. That you not pay your tithes and all those things and keep it to himself. Then he's trying to win this battle. But we came here in Pretoria. To announce to the world, we serve notice today on the kingdom of darkness like Pastor Art has already done before. And we're standing behind him and we declare, we serve notice, devil, on you and your evil forces. In the name of Jesus, we're taking a stand for families. We're taking a stand for the church We're taking a stand for our nation. We're taking a stand for ministries in Jesus' name. Put your hands together as the remnant and just shout, we make a stand. Come on, we make a stand. Now let me give you the characteristics of this remnant, then I want to pray for you. What is the remnant? What is the characteristics of the remnant? Number one. The remnant is marked by the things they do differently. They are marked by the things they do differently. Noah was a remnant. He was a fanatic. Started building an ark for 120 years with no rain. And people were mocking him, laughing at him. But he was the remnant. He did something that no one else did in his generation before him. Or even after him. If I look at CRC and I look at the the whole network here, Pastor Ut is leading a remnant of churches. That when they go in the city, they don't just go a little bit, they build the biggest building, which have never been done in this nation of South Africa up till now. The biggest things are exploding. Why? Because there's a Noah that says we need to build an ark. We need to get families safe. We need to get people in this place. We are the remnant. People may laugh. People may mock. People may blaspheme. But we are standing for God as the remnant. How many of you are the remnant here tonight? Supernatural breed. So Noah was part of the remnant. He was a fanatic. Enoch was part of the remnant. Enoch walked with God until he walked no more. He had a unique relationship that no one else had. Jesus was part of the remnant. Nothing that he did was normal. When he healed a woman with the issue of blood, he violated 14 Jewish laws. Just because he wanted to heal that woman. And he proved that as the remnant, we can do the impossible. He did things that no one else has done. Walked on water, multiplied the fish and the bread, healed the people, changed lives. The remnant, supernatural breed. He did something that no one else 
has done before. And I'm telling you, those of you watching, in this hour, this season, God is calling you to do things that no one else has done in your family or in your lineage, or in your city, or in your nation. It's time for the church, for Christians, to arise to a new level, and we will be called the remnant, the end time remnant in Jesus' name. If I look at Daniel, and I want to read this to you, the, the life of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3. It says, uh, verse 16 and 9 to verse 19, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, the king, the president, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you on this point. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Sounds familiar. But there is a remnant that says, uh -uh. we are not bowing down to the system. We are not bowing down to this regulations. We are not bowing down to this. There is a remnant around the world that says, oh Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry, but we are not bowing down. But we are taking a stand as the remnant to declare that Christianity is an essential place and religion and service. And we will not bow down to fear. We will not bow down to intimidations and manipulations and control and accusations. But we have come together this three days, four days, to sound the alarm and to call the watchmen, to call the people together and say, now it's time. Take up those prophecies. Take up those finances. Take up those healings. Take up those deliverance. And let's go to war. Gideon, another man. I love what the Bible says about Gideon. In Hebrews 11, it says here, verse 32, it says, And what more shall we say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked, worked, worked righteousness. They didn't just pray. Like Pastor Ark will say, Shabbat, Shabbat, fall under the power, and I shine you with my big flashlight. Doesn't work like that. You have to work righteousness. Obtained the promises. Stop the mouths of lions. All these people that their mouths are full of whatever, we stop them. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword out of weakness. We're made strong because. Uh, valiant in battle, turned the fight, uh, the flight of the enemies upon themselves. I love that. They turned against themselves. And in Judges chapter 7, and I'm, I'm done with my first point, it's just this. He says, the Lord said to Gideon, by the hand of these 300 men, I'm going to give you the kingdoms. They are, or there is a remnant tonight. 300 people that says enough is enough we are not standing for this any longer and I believe that our nation hears the cry of people that there is a remnant rising up that will work righteousness that will shut down the lion's mouth that will take the sword of the edge and start declaring the word of God declare war upon the enemy in Jesus name we are taking victory tonight in this place across the world because we are the remnants. Somebody shout, I'm the remnants. We're going to pray for you right now. Five minutes and I want to pray for every sick person and for every person bound by addictions and stuff. Let me give you number two of the remnant. What are they marked? Number one, they're marked by doing things differently. Number two, they are marked by their worship. They are marked by their worship. You've heard the message last night. It's time to worship. Let's come together to worship. I love that message, Pastor. I listened to it last night. And I felt like that's what God is calling us to do. 
the remnant has a desire to worship. And I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a different worship. I'm not talking about, about the song. I'm talking about you. You're going to come and you're going to come into the presence of God. And it's going to feel like new. And when you worship, when you lift your hands into the atmosphere, you're going to feel the power of God. And you're going to worship from brokenness, out of thankfulness, out of gratitude. There is a new worship coming to the body of Christ. A worship that will be marked by the humbleness and the humility and the brokenness of people around the world. Come on, this is the hour for true worshipers. The remnant to worship Him. Let me just lift our hands a little bit here. Come on, everyone, just stand a little bit. Ah, feel the power of God increasing. There, those of you watching, I want you to get up from that couch. Get out of that bed. Come on, lift your hands, turn up the volume right now. For the next couple of seconds, I feel the presence of God. The glory of God is coming. It has entered into this room. You see, when you worship God, He comes. When you start acknowledging Him, He stays. And I want you to worship Him now. You're going to just come into that presence and you say, God, I worship you because you are the King. You are the Lord. You are the Savior. So right now, wherever you are around the world, here in this building and those of you watching, with your own worship, just let the worship go. Don't wait for the music. I want to teach you how you can just worship Him out of your own. Come on. Come on. Just worship Him. Just sing a new song to the Lord. Come on. Just lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Lift up your hands. Come on. Just all across the world. Just give a new song of praise. Come on. Just sing a hallelujah to the Lord. Sing a worship song to the Lord. There. Whatever the Lord is laying on your heart. Come on. Just worship Him. Just adore Him. Just magnify Him. Come on, I want to hear the remnant worship. Let the remnant just worship a little bit. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Come on, say that name again, Jesus. Jesus. Worship Him differently. Come on. Lift your hands. Bow before Him. Come on, Jesus. Come on, around the world. It's a very easy song, lyrics. Just say Jesus. Come on, lift it up in your home. Let your family hear you worshiping. For the last time, let's sing it. I feel the presence of God. If you're sick in your body, I want you right now to start getting into the flow of faith. And God's going to heal thousands of people tonight. Not because of a man, but because of His glory coming into your place. And so right now, if you are sick in your body, I want you to do the following for me. Would you please stretch out your hands towards the television, the one hand towards the television. If you are in this building, you just raise your right hand. I'm going to pray for you. The other hand, put it on the place where you are sick. 
Just put the other hand on that place where the pain is, where the disease is. And God's going to do a mighty miracle right now in this building and across the world. It's not about me touching you. We're not in the realm of the anointing. We're in the realm of the glory. This is where He does everything. And it's the easiest thing for Him to heal you. If you are deaf in one ear, and I, I believe God wants to open up deaf ears tonight. If you are deaf in the one ear, I want you to put your finger in that deaf ear. And there's also someone that's got like a ringing in the ears. God's going to touch you right now. If you're blind, put your hands on your eyes. And as I'm starting to pray and believe God for miracles, I believe that the five miracles of the kingdom is going to manifest which is the deaf shall hear and the blind shall see and the mute shall speak. And those of you who are paralyzed will walk. And those of you who are bound will be delivered. The five miracles of the kingdom. And Father, I ask right now that the five miracles of the kingdom shall be made manifested right now in Jesus' name. Now put your finger in that deaf ear. If you have a ringing in the ears, blind, if you have cancer, God's going to heal you tonight. Put the place, put your hand on the place where the cancer is. If you know if somebody's got COVID, come on, we're going to believe God for miracles tonight. Father, I come in the authority you have given us. And I take absolute authority over every foul spirit of sickness, disease, infirmity, afflictions and pain. Your foul spirit of deafness, I bind you. Come out of those ears right now. Spirit of blindness in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you in the eyes. Come out of those eyes in Jesus' name. Every arthritis, come out of the bones, come out of the joints. Cancer, you come out of the bones, out of the organs. Father, I pray right now that you'll give new lungs and new kidneys and new livers to those people who need it. In the name of Jesus, do a transplant right now from heaven into the bodies of your people. In the name of Jesus, I remove barrenness. We remove high blood pressure. We remove sugar diabetes, migraines in Jesus' name. Father, right now, I command every foul spirit to leave them. Those people who are struggling with the eyes, watery eyes, in the name of Jesus, Christ the Son of the living God the healing power of God is coming to you right now I send the word of God to you that pain in the shoulder it's disappearing right now the back vertebrae third and fourth vertebrae God is healing it right now in the name of Jesus let's just start praying a little bit in the Holy Ghost pain under the rib cage in the name of Jesus I come against that pain loose that person right now somebody smell the smell has just come back you couldn't smell but now that 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 sense is coming back father let your glory go into every home let it go into every nation oh god let the glory of god come lord right now upon every single person in the name of Jesus. And I say in the word of healing, be healed in Jesus' name. Paralysis, loose the people. We command healings to flow right now, Father, like a mighty river. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, the gift of faith works like this. You have to do something you couldn't do before. So I want you to test that bad ear. Take your finger out of that ear. Put your finger on the good ear. Close it and start hearing with the bad ear. Start seeing with that bad eyes. Bend forward. Get out of that wheelchair. Get out of that bed. You have to do something. Test it. Move your arm. Test it. Move the the knees. Start running around in your home. If you had asthma, go and smell something. Come on, let the power of God just do something. When you act in faith, that is when the miracle gets 
uh, in action. That's when the miracle gets completed. So just go right now and just start doing it. And then what you do is this. You start commenting on the section below on Facebook. Phone the numbers on the screen because God is doing a miracle around the world. This is our gift. This is what we do is to come with the power of God and heal and bring deliverance to people. Thousands of people are going to get healed tonight. Thousands of you are going to receive a miracle. Why? Because of the cross that we celebrate on Friday, the power of God is still available to heal, to set free, and to bring deliverance to you. And while you're testing yourself, some of you are watching and you say, I need Jesus tonight. I've drifted away from Him. I'm, backsl I'm backslidden. I don't even know the presence of God anymore. But God is calling you tonight. You're going to be part of the remnant, my friend. You are not going to be excluded. You're going to be like those... You're not going to be like the five virgins that were not prepared. You're going to be prepared with the oil of God. God is calling. If you say, I want to receive Jesus tonight as my Lord and as my Savior, I want to do a prayer for you. And in about 60 seconds, your whole life is going to change. It's going to go from a minus to a plus, from defeat to victory. A new beginning is waiting for you. So if you say, I want to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life, wherever you are watching from, say this, pray with me. Say, dear Heavenly Father, let's, let's do that in the building as well. Yeah, let's help the people. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight just as I am. I confess that I'm a sinner, that I need you. I confess with my mouth that you died on the cross, that you rose again, that you are alive. I invite you to be the Lord of my life. From tonight, I promise to serve you in Jesus' name. I believe I'm now born again. Heaven is my home. I'm a child of God. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God a praise for all these people. I want you to phone that prayer lines quickly. Phone the prayer lines and uh, tell us that you are saved. You may take your seat here. I'm done, Pastor. I've got, I've got all the characteristics, but I just want to do this. You can come up. Everyone here, there is something about the glory of God that we need to tap into. The Bible says this. He says, I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. You need to get to the realm of the glory. I believe as these days are progressing, the glory of God is going to increase more and more. By Wednesday, when you walk in here, there's going to be a thick atmosphere of the power of the living God. How many of you believe that with me? The glory of God. Somebody shout the glory of God. Come on, shout the glory of God. Hallelujah. The whole earth shall be filled with the glory of God. Amen. Put your hands together for Pastor Act as he comes and takes this meeting further. Listen, that was outstanding. Now I need to keep social distancing for all those fantastic people out there. But I actually want to hear point three and four and five and six. No, I won't do that. Let's say you can tell us maybe on Wednesday. <laughs> Let's say a big, that was absolutely outstanding, absolutely amazing. Come on, I love you. Spoke, yeah, okay, let's do it. Um, what great authority power. I tell you, you're like a hidden jewel that God is going to use in an incredible way. He's already done it, but I'm telling you, I saw something on you. Um, and I, you know, we don't ever want to talk. Uh, you, you don't live in the shadow of your dad, but I knew your dad and I was greatly impacted by your father's life. And I'm telling you, you carry what he has and you have something different as well. God is going to use you he already is, but in an incredible way to stir up His servants, not only in this nation, but across the world. We love you. We honor you. And your sons as well. Double, triple. Okay. Come on, let's say thank you, Pastor Nikki. That was absolutely, Pastor Nikki, that was amazing. Big hug. Love you. Love you. Great man of God. Amen. Amen. You know, Bible says we give honor where honor is due. So um, I was witnessing, uh, I was speaking in a school uh, with an evangelist as I started out, Dave Smithist. And afterwards, uh, you know, I was like, 
18, 19, or 19 years old, just came out of the army, and I had this boldness to evangelize, and I went to a school, and he threw me in on the deep side, and he said, you talk this morning. <laughs> and I mean, well, you have to rely on God. And I spoke, and maybe half the school got saved. And afterwards, I, I will never forget, I sat in the car with him, and he said, you really did great today. I said, it wasn't me. It, it, you know, I don't take the glory. He said, no, listen to me. You really did great tonight. And it's okay for you to accept when people say you did great, as long as you will go tonight and you give him all the glory and all the praise. Amen. And I want to tell you that you are going to do great. You are the remnant. You are more than a survivor. You are going to be a thriver. You are going to accomplish things that people said are not possible in the name of Jesus. This is a year of divine restoration. We are going to do our part and we are going to see God do His part. And I'll tell you, I have this huge expectation that God is going to break loose in a total different way. As Pastor Nicky said, I touched on it last night, that our level of worship is going to be something totally different because it's going to be a worship that is authentic. A worship of the remnant, people that survived, people that need God, people that have decided that God is everything. So we're going to spend the last few moments tonight and Wednesday night, come on, we are going to spend time worshiping God, worshiping God, worshiping God. We are going to love on God because He loved us first. Come on, this is not going to be a religious little hand clap and a religious time. I believe in this time we have discovered what our lives are all about that it's all about him and that is why we cannot stay in isolation we cannot stay in a hideaway we've got to tell somebody we have to bring our world to Jesus Christ we've got to share the good news come on after Andrew was touched and he found the Messiah he found Peter and he said come see the Messiah we have to bring people into the presence of Jesus Christ so come on this Friday Sunday and every other time that you have an opportunity in the home cells let's Step up, if I can say, our caliber of worship and let the worship come from that brokenness. Sometimes I say to musicians all the time, you see some of the greatest artists in the world are people that sing differently because they've gone through pain. And sometimes the only time that your message deepens is if you've gone through some things in your life. And I don't think there's a human being that hasn't gone through some things. And yes, we have scars and we have maybe still brokenness, etc. But while we heal others and while we pour out to God, even in a place of brokenness, that's when God pours into us. And that is the worship. That is the sacrifice that God wants for us, from us not standing in a perfect place, but standing in that place of grace, dependent like the Apostle Paul. When I am weak, then I am strong. I've cried three times that this thing may depart from me. And God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. That doesn't mean we are weak. That makes us strong. He said, I labored more abundantly. I'm stronger than anybody else. Yet not I, but the grace of God. That's why our praise and our worship will be pure. It will be strong. It will be defined. And we will choose to say, God is good and His mercy endures forever. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even when hell shows up on my doorstep, I'm not going to be silent. I'm going to worship my God with everything and with every breath I have. Come on. We have nine minutes left there on Faith TV, wherever you are. Put your stove off. Put everything off. And let us just give God this worship that is due unto Him because we're going to do it for eternity day and night, not that there's time in heaven, but that was John's understanding of what was happening in heaven, because heaven has no time. God doesn't live in, the, in, 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 in time. God is eternal, and our worship should be eternal. So come on, in a moment. Yes, worship is more than singing, but I want to tell you, part of our worship is our singing, where we come and we say, oh, come, let us worship. Let us worship. Let us give God what He has given us and spend this moment in gratitude and in worship. You may be in the worst place of your life that sometimes when your worship is the purest, when you're in the lowest moment, like Job when he was knocked to the ground and he loved and, and, and he lost anything and his wife said to him, why don't you curse God and die? He didn't. He worshipped. He worshipped. We have to worship. This season, we have to worship. Glory, worship, worship. 
your worship. You are worthy, God, no matter what I've gone through, no matter where I am. You are worthy. That's worship. Your worship. Worthy. Let's worship him for a moment, please. Alpha and Omega.
You know, I really do believe. And many of the years ago, the Lord said this to me. If we will worship Him and truly exalt Him, He will move in our midst in such a way in the worship that every burden, affliction, disease will be moved, touched, lifted in the time of worship. So no man will get the glory as people just come to worship the Lord. Listen. Worship is a place of healing. It's a place of change. Sometimes the greatest worship are your very tears of hurt. Sunday morning as I greeted people, there was a lady sitting there. She must be 70-something. She grabbed my hand. And she said, Pastor, I have to tell you, in the last year, I almost died three times. But I had to come to church. COVID tried to kill her as well. She said, I had to come to church and worship God. A few weeks ago, a lady sat over there, same thing. Just sat in the service worshiping. And as she was weeping, God was healing her. There is no substitute for God's presence. That woman in Simon the Pharisee's house, she came and worshiped with her tears, her brokenness. Thank you for being with us tonight, Faith TV. We love you. We honor you. God bless you. Amen. We are going to have an amazing Friday, an amazing Sunday, an amazing tomorrow night, an amazing uh, Wednesday night, and there ain't no going back now. So uh, thank you for being here tonight. You make it easy for the preachers that you are here. A big shout out. Um, beautiful presence of God. Uh, we're going to have revival. Listen, when, when we open our churches, we're having revival the way we can. Okay, we're going to put everybody under the presence, the power of God. Thank you to the camera people. Give them all a big hand clap. These two, all of you, all the sound people love you. All the Wow, wow, Jen. What a, what a meeting. What a time. You know, I just love Pastor Nikki. And uh, what a word. Now listen, the meeting's not over. We've got a matter of a few minutes left. I want you right now, wherever you are, just to stay in this atmosphere of worship. Come on, let's just allow the presence of God just for a few moments to continue. I feel His presence so strong. As the band sang that song, it was just so amazing. And God's presence is coming into your airwaves and into your home right now, whatever handheld device you're watching on. I want us tonight to sow an offering, and then we're going to break bread together. But here's what I want you to tell you about the offering tonight. The offering tonight, I feel it has to go to be able to support the CRC churches and uh, all the rest of the churches that have come together to be a blessing, to make a difference from the legal elements of the letters and the correspondence that has been taking place to fight this fight of opening the churches. And I really felt tonight I wanted to do that, so I'm calling to you, the CRC Church right now. I'm calling to you, NBCFC, all the river churches right now, every church that's watching, every pastor that's watching. When I was on the Zoom meeting with Pastor At, and he was sharing with me that, that burden that they've been carrying yes. to fight this fight legally. Understand, we're going to the highest Supreme Court. We are fighting this at the highest levels in our land. And I want us as a network to get behind them. I want you as an individual to get behind. And I want us to make a difference. Because over these nights, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're going to be worshiping. There's a lot more we're going to be going. We're going into prayer times. It's going to be a very special time each and every night from South Africa. For South Africa. But right now, it's about putting a seed in the ground. Just saying, Lord... Here's my seed. Can you imagine if we all just do something tonight? 
Every one of you watching right now, every one of you on Facebook watching, can you imagine if you just do something, make a difference tonight, and just say, I'm going to put this in to help the fight for the opening of the churches. And so what I want you to do is whatever seed you sow tonight, I want you to please reference it. Earmark it. Earmark it. Reference it in that, in that subject line. Say, this is my seed to open the church. Just use the word open if you want. A short four-letter word. We're going to make sure that that seed is allocated to be a blessing, to help the fight for the church to be open. So that's what I want, to, I want you to do tonight, right now. I want you to put that seed in the ground. You can do it digitally. All the information is on the screen. And if you want to stand to fight with us for the opening of the church with your seed, that's what we're going to be doing because this is going to release the power of God. There's going to be a move of God like never before. We're going to see a revival like never before come to our nation, Jen. That's what we're standing for. We are so grateful. We're so grateful to those pastors like Pastor At and all the pastors that are there that we saw uh, even together at that CRC church. Just so willing to stand up and fight for the church of Jesus Christ in South Africa. And so as you sow that seed, know that you are giving into, you are being a part, a vital part of getting this legal fight that we have, and obviously it's a fight in the spirit. We, we don't fight against flesh and, gut and blood, but we do fight principalities and powers that want to resist the will of God and the power of the church in this time that is so necessary. So we want to thank you for really going before the Lord, letting Him place on your heart a seed of gratitude to open the churches in South Africa. And for those of you who are not even from South Africa, maybe you're watching from a different nation. You know, when you get behind the kingdom of God for other nations, you sow in your, into your own nation. That's right. You really do. You will reap a harvest back in your own nation when it comes to fighting for the things of God and the kingdom of God where you live. So let's do a universal giving into this cause together so that we can see the kingdom of God prevail in this area where we can see freedom, especially in the area of worship. You know, I I was watching, Andre, and as people were worshiping with the masks on on faces, you know, the cry of my heart is, God, this is not how it's supposed to be. We don't want any restrictions. You know, the Bible says that even the rocks are going to cry out when we don't. So we want to get to the place where those masks in our churches can be thrown aside and together we can worship That's God right. without any restraint. And this is the cause that we are fighting for. That's right. You know, Jen, as, as the meeting was on the go, one of the pastors was texting me from Mauritius. Do you know that the Mauritius church is only allowed five people? Five people. How do you have church with five people? That's, that that's a family. That's a family. That's not even a home cell. Five people. I want you to understand as we take this fight on in South Africa, like never before, we're going to take it on for every African nation and the rest of the world. And I declare to you, come on, lift your hands right now. This is a fight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we speak the seed to be an impact into the nations of the world that the church of Jesus Christ will open in Jesus' name. I pray over every seed, multiply, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a seed of vision. This is a seed of change that we are believing God for over every single nation of the world. Now I want you to take your elements. We do this each and every night and in closing tonight, I want you to take your cup and I want you to take your bread right now just very quickly because every night we're going to break bread. Tomorrow night, Pastor Ate has some incredible guests with him to preach and share as well and Wednesday night as well. So we're going to do it in this format for the next three nights. And I know that you're going to be blessed because Easter is around the corner. And this is the beautiful thing about Easter, Jen. That's the the day in the Christian church. We celebrate the death but the resurrection of Jesus. Because on Friday, He goes to the tomb. But on Sunday, He rises again. 
And that's why it's such a significant weekend for us. It's a victorious weekend all over the world. And so we're going to be celebrating that. But I want you to take the bread and the cup. We now, over one year, we've been doing this. And this is where our health is. This is where our strength is. This is where our faith is. This is our faith. This is what it represents, the bread and the cup. And Jesus, we come before you. Thank you, Jesus. Before you tonight, we say thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jen, pray for the bread and the cup. Jesus, I thank you for your body that yeah. was broken for us, that we could live in a freedom and a fullness of That's life right. that only comes from believing in you. And Jesus, I thank you for your blood that was shed for us and the power that is in that blood to break every bondage, to heal for every disease, to get us into a place of absolute victory in every area of our lives, including our finances. Jesus, that we can live in the fullness, abundant life that you have paid this price for. That's what we get from being part of your body and being part of your blood. So we take it willingly Thank with hearts you, that are overflowing with gratitude because this is a sample. This shows the victory that we have in you, the life that we have in you. This is what we base our faith on. Your body, your blood shed for us for freedom from sin and an absolute walk of deliverance and redemption and victory in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Thank Come on, you, let's Lord. partake of the body wherever you are. Be blessed as we eat together. Let's partake of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Wow. I'm telling you, if this is Monday night, you don't want to miss Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, never before have we asked that every single one of you stay tuned for every one of the three nights. This is a one-time opportunity where everybody in the nation of South Africa is glued to their TV screens to get the Word of God, that we can fight this fight together in the Spirit, that we can fight it together with the blood of Jesus, and that we can prepare our hearts for Easter weekend, that all fear will be gone in your life and that the faith of God will arise on the inside of you. Because that's, Jen, what I believe. And I believe Easter's coming. The Church of Jesus Christ is going to be open. We're believing for a positive result from our president, all right, that is a favorable result for us the Christian church, the body of Christ all over the nation of South Africa. What a night it's well, been. Either way, we are celebrating Jesus. That's, That's right. it. Either way. And you know, just as Pastor Art was speaking, the whole theme of tonight was about being free to worship. Yes. Having eyes set on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And as we worship Him together, all over the world. It's coming. All over the world. It's coming. We are part of that victory. <laughs> I tell you, combined worship is coming. I can feel Hallelujah. I can feel it right now. Yes. The presence of the Lord. Listen, come on, lift your hands wherever you are. Come on, I, I want to pray a blessing over you because tonight God has touched you. Tonight He's healed you. I, if you if you got blessed through that powerful message of Pastor Nikki as well, I want you to let us know. Let us know of the testimony of the power of God. Father, we speak a blessing In over the Jesus nations, name. over your In people, Jesus the love name. of your people. God, yes. I ask you would come and saturate them yes. tonight. Yes. In the name Hallelujah. of Jesus, release your <laughs> blessing, we pray. Amen. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Central African time. Shalom. God bless you. God bless you.